became angry. And he introduced me to myself. That never going to change. That's why I'm the way I am now. What's up, y'all? Today we will be reading from the book of Hebrews, chapters 3 and 4. Chapter 3. Christ is superior to Moses. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus, who was faithful to him that appointed him as also Moses was faithful in all his house. For this man was counted worthy of more glory than Moses, and so and as much as he who hath boded the house have more honor than the house. For every house is boded by some man. But he that built all things is God. And Moses verily was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony of those things which were to be spoken after. But Christ as a son over his own house, whose house are we if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end? Warnings against unbelief. Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost said, Today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the pro provocation, in the day of temptation, in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works forty days. Wherefore I was grieved with that generation and said, They do always err in their heart, and they have not known my ways. So I swear in my wrath they shall not enter into my rest. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief, and departing from the living God, but exhort one another daily, while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we are made partakers of Christ. We hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end, while it is said today, if ye will hear his voice, Harden not your hearts, as in the provocation. For some, when they had heard, did provoke. How be it not all that came out of Egypt by Moses, but with whom was he grieved forty years? Was it not with them that had sinned, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? And to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that believed not? So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. Chapter 4 God's Promise of a Sabbath Rest Let us therefore fear, lest the promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them, but the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. For we which have believed do enter into rest, as he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, 
and they shall enter into my rest. Although the works were finished from the foundation of the world, for he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise, and God did rest the seventh day from all his works. And in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest, seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein, and they to whom it was first preached entered not in because of unbelief. Again, he limiteth it. <laughs> Excuse me. Again, he limiteth, limiteth a certain day, saying in David, Today, after so long a time, as it is said today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. For if Jesus had given them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day? There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. For he that is entered into his rest, he also hath seized from his own works, as God did from his. Let us labor therefore to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, it is discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight. But all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Seeing then, seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession, for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Wow, and that is the end of the reading today. This was good. Things that caught my attention in the reading today. A few things caught my attention. So chapter 3, verse 4. For every house is builded by some man, but he that build all things is God. I love that. Something else that caught my attention. So, I'm just going to say, one of the subtitles is Warnings Against Unbelief, right? And then, in the last verse of chapter 3, it says, So we see that they cannot enter in because of unbelief. Now, to me... That's the game changer. So I that catches my attention because if you don't believe in God, if you don't believe that Christ died for your sins, that can be the game changer into how your life goes 
and even how it ends like in my opinion you don't get to you don't get to go off in peace so that caught my attention something else that caught my attention was verse 12 in chapter 4 through 13 for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and a tense of the heart neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do so that caught my attention because <laughs> I've always heard of that like heard um God is quick and powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword. That reminds me a little bit of like when a boy come and take try to take Jesus. When um when one of his disciples gave him up, and then the other disciples were ready to fight. Them boy were ready to fight, and one of them ended up cutting off an ear, cutting off one of the um people's ear. And Jesus been like, nah, y'all, don't do that. Y'all ain't even got to do that. <laughs> um, he, basically, Jesus was like, take me. I know my God. I was born to be taken. I was born to go through this. So that reminds me of that. And then in verse 13, neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight. So we are all from God, child. So I I like to I love today reading. Comment down below some things that caught your attention. I would love to hear it. I'm reading a lot for my generation. And not only that, I'm on a journey of reading the Bible in full. Um and next year I will be reading from the new the NIV version. The new international version. So this year I read from the King James Version. So, yes, that's what I'm, I'm on a journey, baby, to see what my God left me in this manual. And so I thank you guys for being here and take care.